number one, we're not going to do as the Democrats and others tend to do, and that is overpromise. That if you put money here, your part, your Alzheimer's is going to be cured. It's false. It is not true. And this is where stem cells come in. Let me very quickly say we're not going to overpromise because you hear a lot about stem cells. People being told that if you've got Alzheimer's, your park, your your stem cells are going to cure you, and it's not true. For reasons it's not true. There there are other more promising areas of research. Number two, these stem cells are amazing cells. It is truly amazing, and I've dealt with cells a lot, and, and those of you who are in science, it is truly amazing. You get these little cells, and they copy themselves, they replicate themselves, and you can shoot them off to become tissues, heart, lung, kidney, and, and it'll happen, and that's what they'll accomplish. So there is promise. If you have diabetes, stem cells offer real hope. It may be 20 years, maybe 30 years, but nevertheless, if you can get a cell and you can shoot it off in development in a certain direction and become like a pancreas, it is pretty neat. I mean, it's unbelievable, as a matter of fact. It's, it's great science. But we are early, and we are very early. And so when we say we support stem cell research, we support stem cell research. It, it is promising. Now, then you get to the, the moral arguments, which are, are, are important to understand. Stem cell, this is more than anybody wants to know, but it's so rare to, that, that they have even five, four minutes. I'll try to do it very quickly. Stem cell starts here, and you've got the embryonic stem cells, you've got fetal stem cells and cord stem cells and adult stem cells and all these stem cells. And the President of the United States said stem cell research is tremendous. And we're not going to ban stem cell research. There is no ban on funding of stem cell research today, period. There is no ban on, on federal funding of stem cell research today. Right now, we do support, under the President's policy, adult stem cell research, fetal stem cell research, cord stem cell research, and embryonic stem cell research. And this goes a little bit to the amendments. People say, you mean we're supporting, and the President's supporting embryonic stem cell research? Yes. But what the President did is said, we're going to support it with federal funds, but we're not going to support embryonic stem cell research that results in the creation of a human embryo and destruction of that embryo. And that's what his policy does. So from a moral standpoint and an ethical standpoint, the president hit it directly and with moral clarity, and that's the beauty, and that's what we capture in the underlying language. Human embryo, why does the president draw this line that we are not going to create embryos to destroy them? to drive cells for embryonic cell research, which is not, we don't do that with federal funding. And the reason is because the human embryo is living, it is biologically human, and it is fully differentiated. Therefore, it deserves, it's morally significant, and therefore, we're not going to take federal dollars and support the destruction of, of that uh, uh, embryo. And that's the president, the policy today. We capture that in, in the language as written. Uh, I don't think, I think the emphasis is appropriate. The subcommittee has, has uh, uh, appropriately moved language around with appropriate emphasis. Uh, but I, I feel very strongly that we should not pass either the second degree or the first degree amendment and that we should stick with the underlying language, which I believe accurately reflects the president's policy and a policy that promotes strongly advancing science and research, but to do so very carefully with, within a moral and ethical framework uh, that we and, and all people, but especially Republicans, can be quite proud. Okay, let me go through and we'll go through further discussion again. I, I won't do this very, very much, but I did want to walk through at least my perception of why it's important to support the language that we have and speak in opposition to the, the two amendments. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, Jonathan Lack from Alaska. Jonathan Lack from Alaska. I would move to table the second degree amendment. We have a motion to table the second degree uh, amendment. Seconded by Mr. Roberts. Second. Second. The motion is no. We have a second. The motion is not debatable. Uh, we will uh, call the question on the motion to table. This is the second degree amendment. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Aye. No. Aye. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. The second degree amendment is tabled. Mr. Chairman, I would move to table the first degree amendment. There is now a motion to table the first degree amendment. That motion is not debatable. Uh, we will call the question on the motion to table. Uh, all in uh, favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Nay. The ayes appear to have it, and the uh, ayes have it. The amendment is defeated. Madam Chair.